Hello and welcome to our two green shoots gardening video just to see what we're we're up to. I'm just in the kitchen garden. It's Saturday so I do spend most of my day in the kitchen garden. That's what we kind of plan now. We designate a day every week and uh, it's great to be in the garden for myself. I do a lot for other people which I enjoy as well but to be in your own garden it's uh, very good for your own health and mental well-being. Today I'm actually just sowing some carrot seeds, so now's a good time to sow carrot seed actually because you avoid the first sort of phase of the carrot fly, the carrot root fly which decimates carrots. I'll, although I've only ever suffered, suffered from this probably once in my gardening career, so um, I've sown purple sun carrots over there. And the next one I'm going to sow in this little plot is early market. Now early market is a stump rooted variety. so. For shallow soils it's actually perfect and uh, it's quite stony our soil although I've removed a lot of stones no matter how many you remove look they still turn up it's like someone's tossing them in there to be honest but uh, remove them as you go basically so you need a plank of wood okay so you've got your your wood plank here now what I'm gonna do is yeah just use your hand you don't need any special tools for this and running your hand alongside that bit of wood you're just gonna do that look with your hand if you can see this that's making a nice shallow drill the next thing you want to do once you've made that that drill you want to get your carrot seed ready now they are quite small as you can see very small seed and I'm just going to sprinkle them into the row. Usually I would water that drill, but because we've just had rain for the first time in weeks and we're doing more rain, I will not need to water that drill. I'll literally just sow the seed direct in that drill and cover them up. And uh, hopefully after a couple of weeks, 10 to 14 days, we should see some germination. Now you just need to be careful that the slugs will munch the new tops and I've had many a problem with that here. So just put some used coffee grounds down or crushed eggshells, a bit of sand actually works quite well here, only a little bit. Or worst comes to worst, use organic slug pellets. Now do not use chemical based slug pellets because they will kill hedgehogs and other wildlife, obviously birds. And if your animal, your pet eats them as well, it could be deadly for them. So do not buy chemical based slug pellets. Use organic means as best as possible. So, I'm just going to sow the seed in the drill. Carrot seed is in. Probably can't see them. Next thing to do is just use your hand again and just working your way back. A couple of soil. And like I said, let the rain do it for you. Now what will happen in those sort of next three to four weeks once they really get growing you'll need to thin them out and do this in the evening because the carrot fly is not very active in the evening so the scent's a little bit distorted for them they won't pick up the smell now they can smell up to three miles away this carrot's scent so do it in the evening and thin them out so these are going to be sort of like smaller carrots so I'm going to be looking at about probably about six inches in between each carrot and hopefully we'll have plenty of carrots this year there's some Japanese onions. I've left some in the ground because I want them to get bigger and I'll obviously pull them up in the next month, dry them off, store them over winter. And although they're cheap to buy, you know, it's just so good growing your own because we get through about three or four onions a week. So they'll go in the polytunnel. There's my leeks. I'll be planting them in the bathtub garden. Now, rogue potatoes, whenever you're harvesting potatoes, dig every last little tuber up and otherwise you'll get rogues coming up. And this was a failed asparagus bed actually. Um, the slugs just absolutely devoured them. So they never got going. However, this one has got going. So there's an asparagus spear there, look. It's coming up. It's its second year, so third year you can start harvesting. Won't bother this year. Irish peas, I was talking about them in the last video. Finally, look at that little pod. Amazing. 
I mean, it's like a pea on steroids. The leaves are huge. Broad beans, still not a... No, wait, no, there are little pods developing. There they are. I love broad beans. Pick them while they're young. Don't let them go to bullets. There's the next batch of broad beans, so they'll be our later crop. The runner beans, absolutely romping away, look. You see them going up the poles. Amazing. And the French beans, which are a little bit more fragile, are actually flourishing as well because it's a little bit more sheltered in our garden. The southeasterly and the westerly winds are, tend to be filtered out by a hedge that surrounds our kitchen garden. And then there's the Canadian French bean, which is like a kidney bean. Also looking pretty damn good. Can't complain really. And I've intercropped with lettuce actually, so you see that little lettuce? There he is. Oh, there's one I'm up there, look. So it's just making space. They'll feed off the nitrogen nodules off the uh, runner beans and hopefully we'll get a nice leafy salad. Oh, George feels like he's missing out, look. No point lying there, George, I'm on the move. Now we did harvest some of the potatoes last week when we showed you that video and when I harvested them, they were very good. I've put in more carrots, follow up crop. We have our ever bearing strawberries in. I cannot remember the name. Um, I'm not going to say it in case I get it wrong. It begins with O and it crops from late May until October time. We had a good sort of Indian summer, shall we say, like we did in Cornwall back then. It'll crop away. So, apple trees. This is the orchard. Um, mown pass through the meadow. It's great to have a meadow in the orchard. I'll be mowing this down early August before the crops start falling. So there's lots of apple trees. There's heritage ones, there's modern ones, and there's our very own apple tree. We found this in a hedgerow about Four years ago now when I worked for the National Trust in the Cotswolds. This is it. Oh. Little apples look. And it is very tasty because it's got a strawberry sort of sweet to it. So I'm just going to show you how to plant an apple tree. Or oh, and this goes for most trees, not just an apple tree. And commonly you think when I plant an apple tree you dig a circular hole and in it goes, job done. Well, there's actually much more to it and I'm gonna show you. This one's called Fiesta. Now, Fiesta is a modern apple and it has beautiful flavor. Its parent is Cox's Orange Pippin, I believe. So I love a good Cox's apple. And with these modern varieties, they tend to have a lot of disease resistance as opposed to the older varieties. Now, Cox's Orange Pippin is susceptible to a lot of disease problems. One little cut into its bark and the canker gets in. Um, but this one has a lot of good strength to it and it's a good apple so don't rule out modern varieties they have a lot of disease resistance which is really important in this erratic climate that we're heading for um, with climate breakdown so do not rule out the modern varieties plant a few heritage ones but do not rule out the modern ones now on to the planting hole i've made a square hole i don't know if you can see it's yep there you go square hole and the theory is the roots will hit each corner and they'll force their way through that sharp corner. If it's a circle, the roots hit that circle and then they just curve around, which is not good. So the theory is square hole, better for root development. Now I've dug it pretty deep, deeper than what it's in the pot and twice the width of the pot. So which is really important. You want them to have a really good root run. I won't be adding compost because just give them a false sense of what they're going into. We want them to toughen up. But what I will be adding is some comfrey pellets. I suppose just a small handful. Uh, I'll mix that into, into the soil. And mycorrhizal. Now this stuff is amazing. It's a symbiotic relationship that forms with this fungi. And what happens is the apple roots bond with this and they'll be able to transport nutrients much more quickly and we want that symbiotic relationship as quickly as possible. Now some people say you don't need to add that because it's enough in the soil. However, if you have soil like this, it's very stony, you want to give it a head start, give it the best chance as possible. So you put a little bit in the hole, the mycorrhizal, and then before you plant, you put a little bit on the root ball. And then in it goes, level with 
the soil that the plant is growing in the pot, cover it over and just gently firm it in with your, with your heel, your foot and then mulch it. Now we use sheep's wool because it keeps the weeds down, we want to keep the weeds down for the first couple of years and that will slowly break down, trap the moisture in and eventually we should have some apples in a few years. First year pick off the apple fruit this is actually a three-year-old apple tree, so I'm not too concerned about that. And it's an investment, remember. They are all baby apple trees, but I'm thinking long-term. It's madness that we import so much fruit into Ireland. And we've got many, many heritage, tasty heritage apples and many modern varieties to choose from. Plums, um, pears, there's so many varieties to choose from now. And give them a good sheltered, sunny location which we have here. There you go, get planting. Where's George? Where's George the dog? He has a little routine where he likes to go for a walk in the meadow with the stick, then he jumps in the river, splashes around, likes to swim as well, he can throw the stick into the river or the lake, and then he loves going into the, the peat bog area where there's a lot of bog myrtle. But the problem is, I thought I lost him just now. But if you just look ahead, his two little ears, he's awaiting a stick. George? George, come! Come! There he is. 